Ham sandwich Oreos suck. I mean, they really do suck. And in my honest opinion, I get why. Hand balancing is a highly neurological skill, so we will all learn it differently. And trying to teach it is like asking someone to create a tutorial on how to walk. Understanding how to handstand for beginners isn't like the early days of learning to pull up or dip, where we need to consider every cue under the sun in order to target specific muscle groups. For many of us, at least as beginners, it's purely about getting to a point where we can confidently hold ourselves up and just balance a handstand. So today I'm going to give you three exercises that will make your journey on learning how to handstand, dare I say, easy. And I genuinely wish I'd had this advice when I was starting out because it would have saved me a lot of pain and wasted effort. The exercises we go through today are going to be focused on three key aspects of the handstand. Again, the plan here is to avoid bombarding you with the millions of cues that typical tutorials hit you with. And the exercises you go through here are designed to A, make handstanding feel as normal as possible, and B, have fewer exercises that you can do more often and even attached to the beginning of other workouts that you may have because remember mastery of the handstand requires quite a high technical proficiency and so we can learn it faster with more frequent practice as close to daily as possible actually okay so exercise number one is the hollow hold and the key focus here is on getting our head around creating that tall straight shape without any aspect of needing to be upside down Bracing the core and eliminating any space under the back while getting the hands and feet as close to the ground as possible is a great way for us to do this as beginners. The hollow hold is highly scalable too. To regress it, we simply bring the hands and legs in. As we get stronger, we send the legs further out, increasing the amount of force we have to resist to stop our back from arching. Once we can maintain a hollow hold for 30 seconds or so, a progression for this is one that makes it a little bit more applicable to the handstand itself, and that is the chest to wall handstand. Here, we keep all the same principles we just spoke about, but now we've got to do it upside down. Old Faithful, aka The Wall, is a go-to tool at every level of hand balancing, and so let it help you create that straight shape. Now, it may take some time to get comfortable being in this position, so we don't need to get it from the jump. Start with ourselves inclined against the wall with our legs bent, and as we get more familiar with the feeling of being upside down, we can straighten the legs out as we bring ourselves closer to the wall. The better we get at creating this straight wall aligned shape, the less strength we will need in the next two exercises, where exercise two is centered around understanding balance. Balance is one of those things that comes so innately to us when we stand normally that we don't really think about it. But we need an exercise that teaches our hands to become like our feet, pressing our fingers down when we lean forward and shifting our weight to the heel when we lean back. A great exercise for understanding this is the frog stand. With the frog stand being low to the ground here too, we have very little jeopardy because falling from here isn't anything to be afraid of and the low center of mass will actually make balancing here far easier. Now the frog stand can be a little bit of an awkward movement, the wrist can present a little bit of a problem and the back of the arms when we place the knees may hurt a little bit. So we can begin with the basic frog stand with our feet on the floor in support but try and keep any support from the feet as light as possible. We really should be balancing as much as possible with the hands. Once we get to a 20 second rock stand, we're gonna to want to progress this as well. And the best progression here in terms of balance is the back to wall handstand. By kicking up into a handstand against the wall, we can now use Old Faithful to practice taking the feet away. Taking what we learned from the frog stand, we can push off the wall using our fingertips, but stop ourselves from falling back using the heel of our hands. And the third exercise is all around the technique of our entry. For most beginners solely interested in learning how to handstand, I'd recommend the kick up entry as it's easier to learn compared to other forms of handstand entry. And the drill we use for this is simply kick up practice. Now the difference between this and the back to wall handstand is that in the back to wall handstand we're trying to maintain balance. But with these kick ups we're doing multiple reps of kicking up against the wall and the aim here is to touch the wall as lightly as possible, eventually not hitting the wall at all. Now when you start this, generating the amount of force needed to do this will be confusing. There will be times when fear prevents us from kicking up high enough and there will be times when we kick up so hard that we shake the whole building. But in time we'll get that balance spot on and then we can start moving this exercise into free space. Here is where we take the elements from the previous two exercises and group them together and attempt to handstand. But one point when it comes to doing this in free space is to make sure that you're having fun with it. Learning a skill like this can be frustrating, but my only regret when learning to handstand was that I let this frustration taint my learning experience. The free space kick up drill especially is designed to be fun, so take your time with it and enjoy it. By practicing all three exercises regularly, we can get to a point where balancing a handstand feels more like a journey and less like random chance. And if you want a cheat sheet on how to increase the success rate of your kick ups, then check this video out right here.